Well, I'm Rolando Blackman, and uh, I'm the director of basketball development for the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, I used to play basketball, of course. It used to be the Big 8. Now it's the Big 12 at Kansas State University. Played there for uh, four years and was an All-American, was on the 1980 Olympic basketball team in the United States. We didn't get a chance to go, but uh, it was one heck of a time to be able to make that team and play for the Dallas Mavericks in the uh, NBA. It was a four-time NBA All-Star and really had a great opportunity to come and coach and have a chance to play also in Europe uh, for Ike in Athens and for uh, Olympia Milano in Milan and a little bit for Limoges in France. So it was a great experience out in, uh, in, in Europe and having the opportunity to still be involved in basketball today is, uh, is a great thing for me. Well, just trying to basically search and keep an eye on the talent base. That's the important thing. I think us, the Dallas Mavericks, over the last uh, six or seven years, we've been winning over 55 games a year, and I think that doesn't come easy. You've got to make sure and understand what the talent pool is all about and keep an eye on who's coming, who's playing, and uh, who can really help your team to win and uh, get your talking skills going to try to bring them to your team. So uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard work, but it's a good opportunity to stay in the game in that way. Well, the game is growing exponentially in Europe. I think any time you have uh, their national teams and also their basketball teams doing very well and winning games during the Olympics and having the opportunity to show great worth and, and also great skill level and great spirit, you really have a, a, a great growth in, in the game simply because everybody gets to see winning basketball and they get a chance to spiritually grow. Anytime if you're a kid, and I'm in, a kid in Europe, I would really believe that the game is really growing and understanding because not only do you have great coaches, but you also have great players on the court actually winning games that uh, really spur not only the people on, but also the kids who are watching and understand that if I get into this, I understand that I can learn from the very best because the very best have beaten the very best all over the world, and I too can become that kind of player and win against the rest of the world. So if I'm a European kid right now, I'm feeling pretty good about lots of stuff. You got football, now you're getting into basketball, so you know, you're kind of just spinning the globe, really, and looking like sports is their thing. I, th I think I can, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to pinpoint the exact Olympic Games. I think when uh, John Thompson had the basketball team, I think during, yeah, during that time when the USA lost, all of a sudden now you started to see a spur in everybody's thoughts, everybody's action. At first it was just talk because I don't know if everybody really believed in the action of being better than the United States or on par. But as time gone on and there's more losses and more wins by teams from all over the world, you can see that on par, even when the United States built their basketball team last year with uh, Colangelo coming in and the good things that were happening there, and I'm, I'm thinking he has the right thing going, but they still got a, got a chance to get a taste of it from the Greek team who, uh, who really pasted, pasted them really good. And... Uh, and now move the program forward. So I think I think anytime you have uh, great programs like that, you got great European players in basketball, lifting the spirit and skill and knowledge level of everybody. Uh, it's 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 a good thing for basketball all around. You see you see how spurred we are in the United States now. I mean it's back to being serious again. Well, I was going to ask you that because you played. Uh, you said you were on the Olympic team. You didn't get to come to Moscow, but you have an appreciation for having played in Europe. Um, and again, I get I got the sense um, maybe recent times that even though the Americans were losing, it really wasn't sinking in, but you think now that it is sinking in and, and that people are starting to take it personally. Well, it's, of course it is. Anytime you have a national team program that uh, you put together our very, very best players in the, in the basketball, we think, in the NBA, and you come over and you play into a European tournament and lose, then it becomes a situation where now you're th thinking about national team spirit, you're thinking about the whole country, and I think it's, it's, it's really emboldened everyone over in Europe, from the coaches, the players, to the kids, and also got the, the United States back into a ratcheting up a program to making sure you got a guy like Colangelo leading a serious program now of not uh, uh, pretenders but contenders to commitment and paying the respects to what the game really needs in preparation for the game on the court. It's a very important, and I think uh, it's heightened everything because Europe is ready, United States is getting ready, I think it's uh, getting ready again, and I think it's just a fantastic thing for basketball all the way around because people are really concentrating on it, and kids are loving it everywhere all over the place because uh, basketball is just basketball. Well, you know, you, with Dallas, you have uh, obviously the, the consummate uh, international player who's devoted to his national team in Dirk Nowitzki, and he kind of has set the standard. Um, but in some cases, even though, you know, with, with Team USA, they've got that commitment from these guys, you 
do hear about the LeBron Jameses and you hear about some of the other guys who are like, well, I'm not sure I'm going to play this summer. Is it because uh, at the FIBA Americas Championship, is that because they are, it's just, it's a, it's a really tough NBA season right now? Do we not really appreciate that? Has it changed since you oh, the, I mean, the appreciation for it is very important because, you know, you want to play for your national teams and you want to get out there and do well. But people have to really note and understand that it's an 82-game 82, 82 season with eight preseason games and you're playing almost you're playing almost 90 I mean 90 or over 90 basketball games and you're, you're getting into a situation where you really need to get some rest sometimes sometimes it is it does impact your season the next season so the important thing is that you've got to find the leeway as to what you're going to do and how much time commitment you're going to make but once you do make the commitment like Colangelo is asking for the three years to make sure to get that done I think that's a good situation so guys understand what they have to do and they build it into their program to be able to be a part of it because you won't beat anybody if you don't have that commitment as we've already seen the other way is the other way is play for two weeks play against the world and lose or give up the commitment to prepare and have an opportunity to play at the highest level and we'll see what happens then because that's still not guaranteed Rolando, you were, you were telling me about Panama tell me about your connections to Panama <laughs> and, and also your name well, the important thing for me is that I'm trying to see what I can do uh, in the future for, for Panamanian basketball. I think we have a lot of uh, talent in Panama, and I'm trying to see what can be worked out with the Federation to uh, move the program forward, getting an actual national team for boys and girls and building the levels of play so that we too can be something like in the region of Puerto Rico who is playing such great basketball and committed to the basketball program. And my name, Rolando Antonio, came from a, a, a great Panamanian singer by the name of Rolando La Serie, which my mother loved a great deal. And she's always told me about this singer, a swooner, and she loved his name. So when I came around, that's the name that I got from a, a guy by the name of Rolando La Serie, a great Panamanian singer. Okay. And were you actually born in Panama? I was actually born in Panama City, Panama. Soy Panameño, see? Well, I left Panama when I was about uh, eight years old, and I go back uh, all of the time. I go back uh, lots of times during the year, lots of times during the summertime. I still have family there, friends there, and uh, enjoy the country very, very much. So hopefully I can do a little bit more with the help of the Federation to be able to build some good basketball programs right there so we can come out of the region of the Americas and, uh, and start making some hay. Let me ask you about that. Um, if you could just comment on Panama's recent success in terms of the FIBA Americas Championship getting to the World Championship. FIBA World Championship, but maybe not taking full advantage of that. Can you just look back at that period of qualifying and then the build up to what happened, and, and also about the immediate prospects of Panama? Well, I've got to give my I got, got to give hats off to Nolan Richardson, of course. Anytime you have a great coach like that come into Panama and and really put a program together over a short period of time, like he did, to be able to qualify for the World Championships, it was a fantastic opportunity for Panama and a great national feeling when they did qualify. I think the downside to that is not uh, retaining him and making sure that he continued the program and continued to build because with that you not only build the essence of the players and understanding how to play together but also you build the essence of the the kids in the country they start to see and realize the commitment and understanding of what's going on so you know Panama is just starting over all the time every year it looks like they start over start over start over and I think at some point in time I think the board members and also the uh, 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 everyone would like to see some commitment being made to the program so that there's an opportunity for for a national spirit to grow and the greatness of basketball to show out of Panama because they do have talent. And can we expect to see them do anything this summer in Vegas? Well, that's going to be interesting. I don't know what's going to happen this summer because I don't think they have a, a national team head coach yet. And, then, and the building the program is going to start not only from this summer but to be made a commitment for the rest of the future. And I think if the Panama can do that, and make a commitment to a coach for the future and making sure that it's not just a one year in, one year out situation, I think you'll find that uh, Panama will bring the talent and, and really have a, a chance to, uh, to show the world that they do have uh, even that little tiny country that they can play some basketball down there too. Uh, listen, real, one, quick, one quick question about Dallas. Um, I think when everybody found out about what happened in the playoffs, we almost fell out of our seats because A, in Europe we all identify with them because of dirt. And also, uh, it's just a fun team to watch and everything that happened last year. And then this year, it just didn't work in the playoffs. I mean, is this something, is this just a hiccup? Is it, you know, are they going to be able to recover from this? I mean, what, what is your assessment of what happened? Well, it's gonna, it's, we're going to be able to recover. I think any time you have a team that's won 67 games, it's not, uh, it's not a fluke situation. It's not uh, fooling around. The important thing for us is that we ran into a buzzsaw, a team that also beat us in the past 
but also has a team, a coach in, in Don Nelson that knows his basketball team and came up with guys that came off the injury list and came off of a hot team, too. They finished the season, Golden State did 16-4, and four, roar, roaring into the playoffs. And, uh, you know, we ran into a buzzsaw that we could not stop. And all of a sudden now, we're out of the playoffs. It's a hurtful, hurtful situation. I mean, we're deeply hurt. But the important factor for us is that uh, we have to try to bounce back from this and move forward again. We've hurt last year from the finals and uh, losing to Miami, and we're hurt this year in the first round losing to Golden State. But we do know that we have a great team, a great program led by Avery Johnson, and uh, we'll be back again. We'll just that's, that's the thing about sports. You have to keep digging, keep toiling, and keep moving forward. And we do have a, a still a great membership as far as the players are concerned, led by a, a great uh, player in Dirk Nowitzki. Yeah, but I think, like anything else, it's uh, it's something that more people have come to it. I think football still has its huge crowd, and, and the uh, baseball team still has people who love it because it's America's pastime type of thing. But once you have the basketball players winning games, leading programs, the other sports don't lose. You just gain more people that's, that's come to the fan base to be able to understand and see exactly what's happening with these great players who are playing this other sport called basketball and it uh, just increases people's worth and understanding of hey now we got three sports we can watch and watch great players do their thing